Hello, good morning. I hope you are having a good Sunday. And if it's not Sunday yet, then when it comes, I hope it's very good. And uh, the time is now. Okay. <laughs> so I'm just going to continue and uh, basically finish up. Yay, finish. Uh, Art and Fear by David Bales that uh, we've been reading through. Well, I've been reading it, but... I suppose a few people have listened, at least to some of what I've read uh, from the book. And uh, this is page 116, and it's 125 pages, so I think that I'll get everything done in, in just one last video. Um, so this is titled, The Human Voice. And the quote that's given is by Pablo Picasso, and it says... Computers are useless. All they can give you are answers. Throughout much of this book, we've tried to confront the difficulties of making art by examining the way those difficulties really happen in the studio. It's a simple premise. Follow the leads that arise from contact with the work itself, and your technical, emotional, and intellectual pathway becomes clear. Having come this far, it's tempting to try to bring this idea to closure by resolving all those leads into one, into a single, clear, concise, fundamental, finely honed answer. Tempting, but futile. Answers are reassuring, but when you're in, onto something really useful, it will probably take the form of a question. Questions. Over the long run, the people with the interesting answers are those who ask the interesting questions. Sometimes, and probably far more often than we realize, the really important questions roll around in our minds for a long time before we act upon them. Sometimes, in fact, they sit there for a long time before we even realize they're important. The question that probably served as the seed crystal for this book was posed to the authors nearly 20 years earlier. The occasion was a friendly debate surrounding the formation of a small artist's collective. The question was, do artists have anything in common with each other? Like any good question, that one quickly generated a flurry, flurry of relatives. How do artists become artists? How do artists learn to work on their work? How can I make work that will satisfy me? For young artists filled with energy and idealism, the answer seemed just around the corner. Only as the years passed did we begin to encounter with increasing frequency a much darker issue. Why do m many who start quit? Taken together, this cluster of questions marks the central pivot of art and fear. It's an odd cluster, not arcane enough perhaps to interest scholars, but too elusive to attract pop psychologists. Perhaps that's just as well. We live in a world where the ready-made observations about art making are typically useless, frequently fatalistic. Okay, here's a little box inside there's a Q that means question <laughs> um, will anyone ever match the genius of Mozart that's the question a answer no thank you now can we get on with our work <laughs> that's a good one I'm gonna try and use that as well in a conversation maybe it was as an icebreaker okay um, Equally, there is no ready vocabulary to describe the ways in which artists become artists. No recognition that artists must learn to be who they are, even as they cannot help being who they are. We have a language that reflects how we learn to paint, but not how we learn to paint our feeling, our paintings. Whew, that was a slip. Where did feelings come in? Okay, hectic. But anyway, sorry, let me just read that one again. 
We have a language that reflects how we learn how to paint, but not how we learn to paint our paintings. How do you describe the reader to place words here that changes when craft swells into art? Artists come together in the clear knowledge that when all is said and done, they will return to their studio and practice their art alone, period. That simple truth may be the deepest bond we share. The message across time from the painted bison and the carved ivory seal speaks not of the differences between the makers of that art and ourselves, but the similarities. Today, those similarities lay hidden beneath urban complexity, audience, critics, economics, trivia, in a self-conscious world. Only in those moments when we are truly working on our own work do we recover the fundamental connection we share with all makers of art. The rest may be necessary, but it's not art. Your job is to draw a line from your life to your art that is straight and clear. Constance. To a remarkable degree, outside the world consists of variables and the interior world consists of constants. The constants are, well, constant. Barring mental breakdown or a rare tropical fever, you'll carry the same burdens tomorrow and the next year as you do today. We experience life as artists no differently from the way we experience life in any other role. We simply exist, perhaps watching from an imaginary point a little behind our eyes, while the scene we observe from that steady vantage point changes constantly. This sense of interior stability is consistent with one widely observable truth. The arc to any individual life is uniform over long periods of time. Subjects that draw us in will continue to draw us in. Patterns we respond to will continue, we will continue to respond to. We are compelled by forces that, like an ocean current, are so subtle and pervasive, we take them utterly for granted. Those odd moments when we notice the sea we swim in leaves us as surprised as the discovery by Moliere's character that he was speaking pro prose, uh, that indeed he had always spoken prose. I don't know if I'm saying that right, prose or prose. Hey, oh, prose. The artistic evidence for the constancy of interior issues is everywhere. It shows in the way most artists return to the same two or three stories again and again. It shows in the palette of Van Gogh, the characteristics of Hemingway, the orchestration of your favorite composer. We tell the stories we have to tell, stories of the things that draw us in. And why should any of us have more than a handful of those? The only work really worth doing, the only worth, w work you can do, convincingly, is the work that focuses on the things you care about. Try to not focus on those issues.